it is your day. Renee, <laughs> talk to us about the amount of emails, phone calls, text messages, celebrations, the Cambridge part of your company going berserk. How does it feel? Oh gosh, what an, what an exciting day. You know, I'm hearing from high school friends I have not talked to in a long time <laughs> who are saying, you never told me. Uh, I think as they're watching this on, on, on TV. But most of all, I'm so thrilled for the employees of ARM. 33-year-old uh, company, great heritage. Um, but watching all the employees in Cambridge celebrate simultaneously, that was, that was magical. And they might continue to celebrate as we see, what, 17, 18% increase. How has that journey of going out to investors, the road show, the story that you've been able seemingly to successfully sell, the fact that you're trading well on this day, what was the vision they wanted to hear? Revenue growth, I hear of what, 11%, up to 25% in the next couple of years, what drives you? I think uh, it was a great process. Uh, investors really wanted to understand the, the opportunity we had in front of us. And of course, AI, which you can't really talk about our industry without talking about AI. And I think helping them understand that uh, you can't really run AI without ARM, without a CPU, and just pointing out to them that it's in everywhere and every device that people touch was a big part of the process for us. Because everyone has a, made the equivalent of, your smartphones completely absorbed more than 90% of phones is where your CPUs are. But the design, the fact that you now want to be integral to data centers and the like, how certain are you on the revenue vision, on the profitability vision, even though we see concerns about macro environment still and whether or not we're in an AI hype cycle? Yeah, so AI, uh, AI is everywhere. Uh, and if it's your uh, edge device like the Assistant or the uh, Alexa or your autonomous vehicle, that's all AI. And, and now we're seeing it in the cloud and the data center with all the growth of NVIDIA. NVIDIA announcing one of their newest products, Grace Hopper, that is based on ARM. So ARM is everywhere relative to AI. We also have a very unique business business model that gives us the ability to have a very, very good uh, vision in the future in terms of when people use our products. So relative to our confidence in the outlook, uh, we have a very, very high confidence that the growth rate that we have talked about will be sustained. How worried were investors about China and your exposure? I think there were a lot of questions, as you can imagine, about China in general, mm -hmm. uh, given all the geopolitics. Our business there looks a lot like the rest of the world. We have great growth in the data center. We have great growth in automotive. Uh, China's huge on electric vehicles, so it's been uh, terrific there for us. I have the same kind of uh, headaches that every other tech CEO has regarding how to navigate through this, but no different. Do you think there will be more pressure now that you're public again? Ultimately, I mean, you came to ARM in 2013, you were listed at that point, but it's not been since 2016 that you have been. How does the game change as a leader of that business now? You know, I think there's some things that we were able to do as a private company that will just be different, right? Yeah. Quarterly earnings, making sure that we hit all our commitments. But ARM is not a business you measure from quarter to quarter. Mm -hmm. uh, you measure us over years and decades. And the long-term vision is something that I am very, very passionate about and will continue to drive the company the same way, private or public. You have a lot of key vested interests, whether they be your clients, Apple, TSMC, Intel taking big stakes in the company today. How important are those voices vis-a-vis -vis Masses, the head of SoftBank, who I'm sure you're on the phone to daily? Yeah, so one of the challenges of our industry, and particularly with, with ARM, is that the fact that we're everywhere, uh, none of this works unless we play nice with others. <laughs> so we have to have uh, a lot of engagement with strategic partners and making sure that we're managing that balance, including Masa, our chief shareholder. Do you think he lets more of ARM become public? Is that something you'd like to see? You know, Moss and I talk quite frequently, uh, but it's really not about the day-to-day. -day. It's about the long-term vision, the, the passion that he and I have about the future, and really about what this company can be long-term. So I don't expect that to change, being a public company. Do you think you'd go public in the UK? I'm sure it's been bittersweet for the London Stock Exchange today. Yeah, so today, obviously, we're in New York, uh, but we're incredibly proud of our UK heritage, and we are opening to considering that down the road. OK, any sort of time frame for that? Uh, none that we can talk about today. I'm, I'm trying to get through today a little bit. <laughs> well, before you get through today in that respect, Investors do love all things regarding artificial intelligence, but how have you managed to land that your story is different? People have been so exuberant about NVIDIA where you used to work, yeah. but they're, they're really exuberant about GPUs. How have you said that you are able to claim a larger royalty share of how AI continues to be served? Yeah, so one of, one of the benefits of the Roadshow was spending a lot of time with investors uh, talking about AI and where we fit. And I think one of the misconceptions is that a GPU can run without a CPU, mm -hmm. uh, which is just not the case. Mm -hmm. uh, the CPU is central to every electronics device, and there are devices that ship with a CPU and a GPU. So 
once investors kind of got that, then explaining where the puck was going relative to, gosh, NVIDIA's next generation, most advanced product, Grace Hopper, is using ARM CPUs instead of the competition, the light bulb went on. That, oh my gosh, you need the CPU, and at the same time, NVIDIA has made a big bet on ARM in their most sophisticated product. And once that message kind of sunk through, people, the, the light bulb went on as, oh my gosh, I, I get it. There has been this moment, though, at which we're trying to understand how the landscape works with global demand and that translating into revenue. When you think of Oracle's numbers that came in, and look, they delivered 30% increase when it comes to their cloud provision and, and their AI bet, but it doesn't always immediately turn into revenue in the here and the now. How convinced are you that it is going to be in the bottom line evident in the next coming quarters? As far as AI? Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I think it's an un questionable that AI, which has already been here, right, for, for a number of years, uh, the chat GPT moment taught us that, oh my gosh, the capability of what this can do going forward has gone up a level. And I think we've seen that over and over in our industry. Uh, there tends to be lightning bolt moments that greatly accelerate the adoption of technology. And I think with AI, as you move towards AGI, computers that can think, uh, I think we now have seen an accelerant for that. Ultimately, down the road, how people make money off that, it'll get figured out. Uh, but AI is here to stay. That's un unquestionable. And it seems as though you're integral to SoftBank's vision of AI and Massa's vision of AI. How can you enunciate a little bit, you say you're talking to him daily, what his vision of ARM within the ecosystem going forward really is? Uh, he and I share a very same view that ARM is one of the most important technology companies uh, in our industry, foundational, uh, if you will. And I would like to see us over the next five to 10 years really be recognized that way. And, and he and I are very aligned on that. Uh, as you can imagine, when you think about five to 10 years out, there's a lot of things to talk about in terms of the art of the possible, but that's really where he's focused on when his conversations with me. Long-term thinking, but then near-term action, we understand he was pretty uh, integral to calling the shots on price points for today's listing. How was that as a just an IPO experience? Did he end up being like, no, we need to leave a little bit of money on the table. This needs to be a successful trade. But all I can say is, uh, this is my first roadshow, so the, uh, everything was a learning experience. We wanted to be at the high end of the range that we set, 47 to 51, and that's where it ended up. So we're happy. We're very thrilled with today. You said that school friends are getting in touch. Can, why have you been hiding this from them? How, how do you feel differently now as a CEO of a publicly traded company? Do you feel differently today? Uh, I feel a little bit differently in looking ahead at this number than what the share price is. That wasn't something we looked at before. But, you know, again, when I, and I told this to employees, while the IPO is amazing and I'm, I could not be more proud of it, I am far more excited about the next five to 10 years. And, and that's where my head is focused. Obviously, we need to do things as a public company CEO, but um, I don't feel too much different. And sometimes these are marketing exercises. Mm -hmm. Arm is B2B. But do you think you've become more relevant B2C now? You're saying how people had no idea. Well, that's because largely people don't realize that every day they're interacting yeah. with your designs, with your blueprints. The, the people who need to know what we do, do know. Obviously, just given the fact that all the global partners that we work with. Uh, going forward, how to market ourselves as a public company. That's one of the things as a, a public company CEO I'll spend some time thinking about. Uh, but right now, we're just kind of focused on, uh, on today and, and what that means. And meanwhile, within this exuberant of today, yesterday we saw basically every key chief executive of an AI company, AI related company, uh, indoors in a closed hearing with Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer. Can you tell us about regulation? How do you see the landscape evolving to ensure that you can harness that AI moment? I think it is one of those areas that um, is an unknown moment. And I, I remember talking to an executive about the analogy or metaphor we used was when cars were invented. You mm -hmm. didn't have driver's licenses. Uh, you didn't have lanes. You didn't have rules of the road. There was a lot of things that people had to figure out in terms of uh, taking a, a device that was going to be very, very productive, but could be very dangerous in terms of automobile accidents. AI is a little bit of the same in the sense that we're now in a new paradigm where some, uh, some rules and regulations need to be figured out. And that's why I think you're seeing all this activity around that area. Is the US leading the charge on regulation? Is Europe, is the UK? Where's getting it right from your perspective? I think all the governments are trying to figure it out. Uh, I know the EU has spent a lot of energy on this, as had the UK. So in terms of who's getting it right, I think it's still early days. And, uh, and everyone's really just trying to learn how technology and this new uh, powerful algorithm will work together.